child, but yes. Winner the child. Child from the East. They put this man, they destroyed this man, but they put him in jail again because they didn't want him to testify. They didn't want him to testify. That's why he went to jail. They put him in jail twice. The world of politics is often a theater of dramatic turns and shocking revelations, but few events have sent shockwaves through the American political landscape as the recent developments involving Donald Trump and the explosive actions taken by pop star Ariana Grande. As the 2024 presidential election looms just a few months away, Trump finds himself ensnared in a legal quagmire, guilty of 34 charges in the New York hush money case. Former President Donald Trump is now a convicted felon. He is the first ever former U.S. president to be convicted of a crime. Involving adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Was it hush money to stay silent? Yes. Um, the story was coming out again. Um, I was concerned for my family and their safety. In a move that has not only rocked Trump's political aspirations. Where we had a conflicted judge, highly conflicted. There's never been a more conflicted judge. Now, I'm under a gag order, which nobody's ever been under. No presidential candidate's ever been under a gag order before. But also the entertainment industry, Ariana Grande has emerged as a fierce critic, delivering a public and potent denunciation that could very well spell the end of Trump's career. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The hush money case, which has long been a dark cloud over Trump's public life, finally came to a head in New York. With today's verdict, former President Donald Trump was not only convicted on 34 felony counts, he also made history, becoming the first former U.S. president to be convicted of a crime. The court found Trump guilty of multiple charges, including fraud and conspiracy, related to payments made to silence Daniels about an alleged affair. On the first charge of falsifying business records. Guilty. On the second charge. Guilty. On the third charge. Guilty. On the next 31 charges. Guilty, 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 guilty. That's right, guilty, 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 guilty. guilty. This verdict has not only highlighted Trump's legal vulnerabilities, but has also underscored his ethical failings, calling into question his suitability for the highest office in the land. The implications of this case are vast, touching on issues of corruption, misuse of power. Nobody wants to write about it, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. If I do, he said, I get put in jail. So we'll play that game a little bit longer. We won't talk about it, but you're allowed to talk about it. I hope you do because there's never been anybody so conflicted as this. And the pervasive culture of deceit that has characterized much of Trump's public and private dealings. Enter Ariana Grande, a pop icon known for her powerful voice and progressive stances on various social issues. The last time you were here, you were dressed as a cow. Yes, I was. Yes. It was crazy. Yes, you were utterly adorable. Oh, thank you. You get it? Grande's intervention in this political debacle has been nothing short of incendiary. Utilizing her vast platform, she has voiced a vehement condemnation of Trump, framing the verdict not just as a legal failure, but as a moral indictment. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. Grande's denouncement has resonated deeply with her millions of followers, many of whom are young, politically active, and eager for change. By aligning herself against Trump, Grande has effectively mobilized a significant segment of the electorate, particularly those disillusioned by the former president's actions and rhetoric. Grande's statements have been sharp and unambiguous. She has called out Trump for his hypocrisy, his disregard for legal norms, and his blatant misogyny. Her comments have added fuel to the fire of public outrage, turning the legal verdict into a broader cultural moment. In an era where celebrity influence can sway public opinion and even impact political outcomes, Grande's denunciation of Trump carries substantial weight. It is not merely a celebrity's opinion, but a clarion call to her fans and the wider public to reject Trump's brand of politics. The timing of Grande's intervention is particularly crucial. With the 2024 election fast approaching, the political stakes are higher than ever. Trump's campaign, already beleaguered by legal challenges and dwindling support. The results of this great and historic presidential election 
if I win. Now faces the added challenge of countering Grande's influence. Her critique has amplified the existing discontent within the electorate, making it even harder for Trump to mount a credible comeback. The convergence of legal troubles and celebrity opposition has created a perfect storm that threatens to derail his campaign entirely. Moreover, Grande's actions have emboldened other public figures to speak out against Trump. Comedians, late-night hosts, and social media influencers have joined the chorus, creating a widespread and sustained wave of criticism. We are smack dab in the heart of primary season, and Donald Trump is out there trying to win over the voters that matter most, his juries. <laughs> I want to start off by saying happy Monday to everybody. Hope you all had a great weekend. I did. I mean, the weather here in New York was absolutely Donald Trump as a convicted felon. <laughs> Figures like Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert have used their platforms to ridicule and denounce Trump, further eroding his public image. Oh. Yes, yes, I agree. This is truly an historic moment as Donald Trump becomes the first U.S. president convicted of a crime. It was a big afternoon in New York, and for the United States of America, we have the, a verdict in the case of the people versus uh, O.J., I mean, D.J. <laughs> Donald John Trump is guilty of 34 felony charges. This collective outcry has not only highlighted Trump's failings, but has also galvanized a diverse coalition of voices committed to ensuring he does not return to power. You know, How's Melania doing with that? She's fine, but I think it's very hard for her. I mean, she's fine, but it's, you know, she has to read all this crap. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure the only thing she reads is her prenup over and over again. But... The impact of Grand's actions extends beyond the immediate political ramifications. Her bold stance represents a broader cultural shift towards holding powerful figures accountable. In a society increasingly aware of issues like corruption, abuse of power, and systemic injustice, Grande's denouncement of Trump is emblematic of a new era of activism and engagement. It signifies a rejection of the old norms that allowed figures like Trump to operate with impunity and a demand for greater integrity and accountability in public life. Trump's response to these developments has been predictably defiant. When they say falsifying business, that's a bad thing for me. I've never had that before. I'm falsifying. You know what falsifying business records is? In the first degree. He has attempted to dismiss the charges as politically motivated and has lashed out at Grande and other critics. However, his bluster rings hollow in the face of overwhelming evidence and a growing chorus of condemnation. The legal verdict has stripped away much of his veneer of invincibility, exposing a man vulnerable and increasingly isolated. His attempts to portray himself as a victim of a witch hunt are undermined by the gravity of the charges and the clear evidence of wrongdoing. As the election draws nearer, the implications of this case and Grande's intervention will continue to unfold. Trump's ability to campaign effectively is severely hampered by his legal entanglements and the mounting public disapproval. Every new development in the case serves as a reminder of his ethical failings and fuels further scrutiny. In this charged atmosphere, Grande's voice has become a powerful symbol of resistance, embodying the public's desire for change and accountability. The broader political landscape is also being reshaped by these events. Trump's rivals, both within the Republican Party and from the Democratic side, are seizing the opportunity to distance themselves from him and present themselves as viable alternatives. The legal verdict and the ensuing backlash have created a fracture within Trump's base. Guilty, count 33 and 34, guilty. Uh, that is Donald J. Trump, defendant wow. in New York versus Donald Trump, uh, found guilty on all 34 the felony counts. Uh, that is the verdict here in this case. With some supporters reconsidering their allegiance, this fragmentation poses a significant challenge for Trump, who has long relied on a solid and unwavering base of support. In the media, the story of Trump's downfall and Grand's role in it has dominated headlines. I would say probably almost nobody does. Nobody even thinks about it. They put this man, they destroyed this man, but they put him in jail again because they didn't want him to testify. They didn't want him to testify. That's why he went to jail. They put him in jail twice. News outlets have extensively covered the legal proceedings, the reactions from various public figures, and the potential impact on the upcoming election. This relentless coverage has kept the issue in the public eye, ensuring that it remains a focal point of political discourse. 
Grand's involvement has added a layer of intrigue and urgency to the narrative, making it a compelling story that resonates with a wide audience. The intersection of celebrity and politics, as exemplified by Grand's actions, is a testament to the evolving nature of public engagement. Celebrities, with their vast reach and influence, are increasingly playing a role in shaping political outcomes. Grande's denunciation of Trump is a prime example of how cultural figures can leverage their platforms to affect change and hold powerful individuals accountable. This trend reflects a growing recognition of the interconnectedness of cultural and political spheres and the potential for celebrities to be agents of social and political transformation. In the wake of the explosive revelations about Donald Trump's guilty verdict in the New York hush money case, the political landscape is undergoing a seismic shift. This shift is characterized not only by the fall of a former president, but also by the rise of voices that rally behind his opponents. Among these voices are prominent commentators like Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert. Also worth noting, according to the ABC Ipsos Little Debbie's Swiss Roll Poll, 51% of voters think Trump intentionally did something illegal, while 12% think Trump did something wrong, but not intentionally. It was a total accident, folks. My penis slipped and fell down a flight of porn stars. Who have become increasingly vocal about their support for President Joe Biden as the 2024 election approaches. There's good news for Joe Biden because a brand new poll shows Biden ahead of Trump by two points. Jimmy Kimmel, known for his incisive wit and sharp political commentary, has used his platform to underscore the contrast between Biden's administration and the chaos surrounding Trump's legal troubles. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end and we'll win. And if we don't win, we'll say we won anyway. Yeah? <laughs> On his late night show, Kimmel has emphasized Biden's commitment to restoring dignity and integrity to the White House. You know, one, one of the things that's causing problems is that people think it's the Democratic Party that's so divided and the problem. The problem is we have 48 out of 50 senators vote with me 95% of the time, more than any president has gotten that kind of support from their, from their constituency. He highlights Biden's achievements, such as the successful rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. We know what we need to do to beat this virus. Tell the truth. Follow the scientists and the science. Work together. Put trust and faith in our government to fulfill its most important function, which is protecting the American people. No function more important. We need to remember the government isn't some foreign force in a distant capital. The passage of significant infrastructure legislation I'm going to get you each a pen, but there's 30 of you up here. But now I have one pen. Just break it in 30 parts. Are you vice president? Please. All right. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Much better. Yeah. Bravo. And efforts to address climate change by framing Biden as a steady, competent leader. The Inflation Reduction Act is also the most significant investment ever in climate change. <laughs> ever. Kimmel aims to present him as a stark contrast to Trump's scandal-ridden presidency. If you were president, would you declassify, you can answer yes or no to this, yeah. would you declassify the 9-11 um, files? Yeah. Would you declassify JFK files? Yeah. Would you, I, did, I did a lot of it. Would you declassify the Epstein files? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I mean <laughs> Not all of them. I mean, not. If I mention, no, I won't. But Stephen Colbert, another influential figure in late night television, has similarly thrown his weight behind Biden. You never know what is a star after all. What is a star? That's a bit of a rough pivot. <laughs> I've got some beautiful stars behind me. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the beautiful stars. On second thought, what is a star? <laughs> Colbert who has consistently criticized Trump throughout his tenure, sees the former president's legal issues as a validation of his critiques. Also worth noting, according to the ABC Ipsos Little Debbie's Swiss Roll Poll, 51% of voters think Trump intentionally did something illegal, while 12% think Trump did something wrong, but not intentionally. 
It was a total accident, folks. My penis slipped and fell down a flight of porn stars. On his show, Colbert often juxtaposes Biden's calm, measured approach to governance with Trump's erratic and often inflammatory behavior. Says President Trump, oh yes, oh yes, and quickly. <laughs> Is he giving a speech or reading a book to toddlers? <laughs> oh yes. By doing so, Colbert seeks to remind viewers of the benefits of stable leadership and the dangers of returning to the turmoil of the Trump era. Oh, he also played Vegas. It was, by his own report, 110 degrees. So naturally, Trump held an outdoor rally at noon. <laughs> this is true. Some people question whether that was a good idea, but Trump was not concerned. These commentators are not merely offering their opinions in a vacuum. They are part of a broader cultural movement that seeks to engage citizens in meaningful political discourse. Janice Trump made his first <laughs> outing to, after his guilty verdict. Trump spent most of the weekend at his golf club in New Jersey, then went to a UFC fight before finally heading back home to Florida. It's good to see him out crossing state lines while he still can. <laughs> but Their shows reach millions of viewers, many of whom might be disillusioned with the current state of politics. By advocating for Biden and highlighting his administration's accomplishments, Kimmel and Colbert aim to inspire hope and encourage voter turnout in the upcoming election. Ariana Grande's support for Biden is another critical component of this cultural and political shift. Her influence extends far beyond her music, touching on social justice, mental health awareness, and now political advocacy. Grande's endorsement of Biden is rooted in her belief in his policies and his vision for a more inclusive and equitable America. She often uses her social media platforms to share information about Biden's initiatives and to mobilize her fans to get involved in the political process. Grande's efforts to support Biden are multifaceted. She has organized virtual events, participated in voter registration drives, and collaborated with other artists to amplify her message. By leveraging her massive following, Grande is able to reach a diverse audience, many of whom might be first-time voters or individuals who are typically disengaged from politics. Her ability to connect with her fans on a personal level makes her advocacy particularly effective, as she can translate complex political issues into relatable terms. The collective influence of commentators like Kimmel and Colbert. You never know, what is a star after all? What is a star? That's a bit of a rough pivot. <laughs> I've got some beautiful stars behind me. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the beautiful stars. On second thought, what is a star? <laughs> along with cultural icons like Grande, represents a significant force in modern American politics. Their support for Biden is not just about promoting a candidate. It is about advocating for a vision of the country that prioritizes justice, equality, and effective governance. In a political climate often dominated by negativity and division, these figures provide a counter-narrative that emphasizes hope, progress, and the possibility of positive change. They want to integrate ChatGTP throughout all of their new phones. When did he start talking like this? When did that... He sounds like five angry Muppets at once. It's like one runs the spectrum from Kermit all the way to Scooter. When are we gonna say enough is enough up to Joe Biden? It... As Trump's legal battles continue to unfold... Says President Trump, oh yes, oh yes, and quickly. Is he giving a speech or reading a book to toddlers? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> said President Trump. The contrast between his situation and Biden's presidency becomes increasingly stark. The former president's indictment on 34 charges has cast a long shadow over his political future. We have breaking news. Stormy Daniels is expected to take the stand today in the criminal hush money trial against former President Trump. Prosecutors argue Trump orchestrated a last-minute $130,000 payment to the adult film star ahead of the 2016 election in exchange for her silence about an alleged affair. Raising serious doubts about his ability to mount a viable campaign for the 2024 election. In contrast, Biden's administration continues to make strides in addressing the nation's most pressing challenges from health care to infrastructure to climate change. The support of high-profile commentators and celebrities plays a crucial role in shaping public perception. OK. Trump definitely doesn't know what the word literally means, but 
Given his inability to talk about the Bible, it is possible that he doesn't know what crucified means either. Though, I could be wrong, maybe Jesus got nailed to planks because of his hush payments to a porn star. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the close personal relationship that Trump has with the Bible, which for the... And galvanizing voter support. Their ability to communicate complex issues in an engaging and accessible manner helps to bridge the gap between political elites and everyday citizens. By endorsing Biden, these figures not only express their personal beliefs, but also help to create a broader cultural consensus around the values and policies he represents. In the months leading up to the 2024 election, the interplay between Trump's legal troubles and the vocal support for Biden... You saw what happened to some of the witnesses that were on our side? They were literally crucified by this man <laughs> who looks like an angel, but he's really a devil. ...will be a defining feature of the political landscape. The former president's attempts to downplay the significance of his guilty verdict and rally his base... The former president, Donald Trump, who's currently appearing in the lower Manhattan courtroom just behind me, round the corner. Mr. Trump was in defiant mood as he left Trump Tower for the court building this morning, entering through a discreet entrance away from the crowds outside. In a post on his own social media platform... ...will be met with a formidable opposition, not just from political adversaries, but from influential cultural figures as well. For Biden, the endorsement of figures like Kimmel, Colbert and Grande provides a significant boost. Their support helps to counteract the negative narratives that often dominate the media and provides a platform to highlight his administration's achievements. In an era where celebrity influence and political advocacy are increasingly intertwined, the backing of these commentators and entertainers is invaluable. As the 2024 election nears, the shadow of Donald Trump's legal woes and his string of broken promises... Trump's campaign is really uh, trying to appeal to minorities, but that requires being appealing. So instead, <laughs> Trump supporters have been creating and sharing AI-generated fake images of black voters to encourage African Americans to vote Republican. <laughs> ...casts a long shadow over his political aspirations. The guilty verdict in the New York hush money case involving Stormy Daniels has not only tarnished his reputation, now, Trump has denied the charges and the affair. Today, he and Stormy Daniels will be face to face in court. And her testimony comes a day after the jury got its first look at the allegedly fraudulent documents at the heart of the case, and after the judge fined Trump for a 10th gag order violation, warning the former president could face jail time if he violates the gag order again. But also reignited discussions about the myriad promises he made during his presidency that went unfulfilled. Commentators like Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, and others are now using their platforms to scrutinize these failed promises. New York and for the United States of America, we have the, a verdict in the case of the People versus uh, OJ. I mean, DJ <laughs> Donald John Trump is guilty of 34 felony charges. <laughs> After seven long weeks, the courtroom is empty and Donald Trump's diaper is full. <laughs> The decision emphasizing the contrast between Trump's rhetoric and his actual achievements. Jimmy Kimmel has been particularly vocal about holding Trump accountable for his numerous unkept promises. The Jello cup on your prison cafeteria tray. 34 <laughs> felony charges. That's 34. That's 34. That's 34, folks. <laughs> we should automatically make those jurors the new Supreme Court. <laughs> now the big question is. Will he do time? On his late night show, Kimmel often highlights the disparity between Trump's grandiose campaign pledges. And they think that's good. So what you do is you keep having it go on and on and on. The electric bill is 10 times more than the water. And these are areas that have so much water, they don't know what to do with it. They're flooding. <laughs> not only is this nonsense, when do you think was the last time Trump loaded a dishwasher? <laughs> Maybe never and the reality of his administration's actions. Said their encounter was brief and that Trump did not wear a condom, which is not surprising. He also stared directly into an eclipse. Not exactly a safety <laughs> first kind of guy. She said they had sex in the missionary position and that Trump told her she reminded him of his daughter. Oh. <laughs> For instance, Trump repeatedly promised to build a wall along the US-Mexico border and have Mexico pay for it. However, the wall remains incomplete, 
and the financial burden fell on American taxpayers, not Mexico. Kimmel's critiques underscore the lack of transparency and follow through in Trump's policies. I guess you'd be mad on Father's Day if there was a whole day dedicated to your two biggest failures, <laughs> Drippy and Dopey, the Dolson twins. By the way, the golden child, Ivanka, came out of hiding to post Happy Father's Day celebrating all the amazing dads out there with love and gratitude, alongside a picture of, I guess, her as a baby with her annoyed-looking father feeding her and... The Presenting them as emblematic of his overall approach to governance. Stephen Colbert, known for his sharp satirical style, has also taken aim at Trump's broken promises. Very, the now very unpopular governor of this state. This guy, he's got to be on something. I've never seen anybody with energy. He's like uh, hopscotch. Jeez, he really is losing it. That sentence makes absolutely no. Colbert often revisits Trump's vow to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. Trump portrayed himself as an outsider who would rid the capital of corruption and special interests. However, Colbert points out that Trump's administration was marred by numerous scandals and high-profile resignations. Within two years, we were so far above Saudi Arabia and Russia, which were number one and two, you have to see the chart. They're like this, and we're like, ding, boom. Oh, I know that one. Ding, boom. Ding, 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 boom. Suggesting that the swamp was not drained, but rather deepened. By highlighting these contradictions, Colbert aims to expose the gap between Trump's populist rhetoric. Back in college, he worked as a chimney sweep, wearing a black top hat and tails like Dick Van Dyke's character in Mary Poppins, which means we might get to hear some GOP talking points in a bad Cockney accent. <laughs> Immigrants is poison our blood, isn't it? <laughs> it's a jolly holiday with Tommy Trumpkins. And his actual record in office. Beyond the late night circuit, Ariana Grande has also contributed to the discourse surrounding Trump's unfulfilled promises. While primarily known for her music, Grande has used her platform to draw attention to issues such as climate change and social justice, areas where she believes Trump's promises fell particularly short. During his campaign, Trump pledged to address various environmental issues and support clean energy initiatives. Instead, his administration rolled back numerous environmental protections and withdrew the United States from the Paris Agreement. Grande's advocacy highlights these failures encouraging her followers to consider the long-term consequences of Trump's environmental policies. One of the most glaring examples of Trump's failed promises is his handling of health care. Trump campaigned on a promise to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, ACA, with something much better that would cover everyone at lower costs. However, despite multiple attempts, his administration failed to pass any comprehensive health care reform leaving millions of Americans in a state of uncertainty. Commentators like Kimmel and Colbert violating the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause. Well, today, the Supreme Court said Trump can stay on all state ballots in a unanimous ruling. A ruling... I agree. It is a ruling that I will remind you no one has to follow because last week I declared the Supreme Court unconstitutional. So... ...have not hesitated to remind their audiences of these failures. Daniel says she came out of the bathroom and found that Trump was in the bedroom waiting for her. In his boxer shorts and a t-shirt, she'd been planning to go. She said he was seated on the bed between her and the exit. Like a, like a traffic cone with nipples or something. And, <laughs> and by the way, if you're having trouble imagining Trump seducing a lady in his bedroom clothes, well, just feast your eyes on this and you'll see that <laughs> no one puts the mold in smoldering like Donald Trump using them as a springboard to discuss the broader implications for public health and economic stability. The economic promises made by Trump also come under intense scrutiny. He promised to revive manufacturing, create millions of jobs, and achieve unprecedented economic growth. While the economy did see periods of growth during his tenure, much of it was part of broader trends rather than specific policies he enacted. Moreover, the COVID-19 pandemic severely impacted the economy, and Trump's handling of the crisis has been widely criticized. The promised manufacturing boom never fully materialized, and many of the jobs he touted were either temporary or part of short-lived projects. 
Colbert's commentary often emphasizes these points. Order. I, I won't say it because I don't like using the word bull in front of these beautiful children. So I won't say it. I won't say it. I almost did. For sure, that was a close one. I almost said bull in church right here. Something I stopped myself before I up. Arguing that Trump's economic legacy is far less impressive than he claims. Ariana Grande's focus on social issues also brings Trump's failures into sharp relief. Throughout his presidency, Trump promised to support the working class and champion the rights of marginalized communities. However, his administration's policies often told a different story. From the controversial family separation policy at the border to attempts to ban transgender individuals from serving in the military, Trump's actions frequently contradicted his professed support for vulnerable populations. Grand's vocal advocacy for LGBTQ plus rights, immigrant rights, and racial justice serves as a poignant counterpoint to Trump's rhetoric, highlighting the dissonance between his promises and his policies. The media plays a crucial role in dissecting these broken promises and holding Trump accountable. The extensive coverage of his legal battles and the ongoing analysis of his record ensure that the public remains informed about the discrepancies between his words and actions. Commentators like Kimmel and Colbert use their platforms to provide context and critical analysis. Also mentioned our former president shared Father's Day wishes as well. He wrote, Happy Father's Day to all, including the radical left degenerates <laughs> that are rapidly bringing the United States of America into third world nation status with their many attempts at trying to influence our sacred court system into breaking to their very sick and dangerous will. Isn't that sweet too? That's what a sick individual. That's, you know, I'll tell you something. If anyone deserved a happy Farter's Day card, it was him, not me. That's... Helping viewers to understand the broader implications of Trump's policies and his overall approach to leadership. In Venezuela, did you just see Maduro? Venezuela, though it's uh, unbelievable. Yes, the nation of Venezuela, unbelievable. <laughs> Located just north of Uruguay, <laughs> and. Peru? <laughs> Trump's speeches weren't all demented word slurry. He also did the completely normal thing of describing a graph that no one can see. For Joe Biden and his supporters, Trump's string of broken promises provides a valuable contrast. Anyway, here, here's SCOTUS's basic rationale. The majority says that disqualifying a candidate for insurrection can only occur when Congress passes legislation. Okay. Quick question. If Congress does decide to pass that legislation to disqualify a candidate for insurrection, what if he sends his mob to storm Congress to stop them from passing that legislation? Does that count as insurrection? Or do they have to pass more legislation about that before the next mob shows up? I'm just asking. Biden's administration has made a point of emphasizing transparency, accountability, and a commitment to fulfilling campaign promises. By highlighting Trump's failures, Biden's team can underscore the importance of trust and integrity in leadership. This approach not only helps to distinguish Biden from Trump, but also reinforces the Democratic Party's broader message of responsible governance and social progress. The impact of Trump's unfulfilled promises on the 2024 election cannot be overstated. His legal troubles and the constant reminders of his broken pledges erode his credibility and make it difficult for him to present himself as a viable candidate. Voters are likely to be more skeptical of his claims and more critical of his record. This skepticism is bolstered by the ongoing critiques from influential commentators and cultural figures. Hey, are you ready to rock back and forth? <laughs> it's like he's, it's always like he's waiting for a spaceship to beam him up. It's... You know, there's a clip of Joe Biden going around today, uh, and they say he froze and had to be escorted off stage on uh, Saturday night. I was standing right next to him when it happened. He didn't freeze. He was just listening to the people calling him in the front row. But the right-wing media, well... Who ensure that Trump's failures remain in the public eye. 
the fallout from Donald Trump's guilty verdict and his string of broken promises. Mr. Trump traveled to court with members of his Secret Service detail, followed by two of his lawyers in a second car and another car behind with two aides. There was a glimpse of Mr. Trump seen going into the courtroom and some still photographs have been released of him sitting with his legal team inside the court. Has provided ample fodder for late night comedians who are now turning their attention to the Trump family itself. And just then, Eric bursts in. He's bawling his eyes out, screaming, Daddy, I got sunburn on my tushy. I look over. This kid's got no pants on. His backside looks like a steamed lobster. And I thought, this is going to be a long pandemic. All true. Sure, we did not alter one word. And this is exactly how it appears. Trump's in Wisconsin tonight at a rally. He's at his golf club in New Jersey. Commentators like Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert, known for their sharp wit and incisive political satire, have begun to laugh at the Trump family, underscoring the absurdity of their situation and further diminishing their public standing. Here's Kato on the Late Show Band, everybody. There you go. Now, folks, as I mentioned uh, over there in the monologue, Trump's New York trial is over. But there are still a lot of questions left. For example, where the hell was his family? Over the seven weeks of the trial, only Eric regularly showed up. Jimmy Kimmel, never one to shy away from a comedic opportunity, has taken to highlighting the antics and missteps of the Trump family on his show. From Ivanka Trump's questionable business dealings to Donald Trump Jr.'s social media blunders, Kimmel's monologues are filled with biting humor that exposes the contradictions and failings of the family. By laughing at the Trump family, Kimmel not only entertains his audience, but also reinforces the narrative of incompetence and ethical lapses that have come to define the Trump brand. Stephen Colbert, with his characteristic blend of humor and critique, has also focused his attention on the Trump family. Colbert's segments often juxtapose the family's grandiose claims and self-importance with the reality of their actions and public perception. Whether it's Eric Trump's bewildering media appearances... I'm here, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm also guilty of 34 counts of loving you. <laughs> now, notably, notably absent has... Or Melania Trump's controversial initiatives and Melania Trump. She has not released any public statements about the trial, and she never showed up in court. Even though, on the day of the verdict, she was in Manhattan. So, she was in New York, but we don't know where. That's interesting. Of course, the other big question now that the trial is over is, where are the jurors? They're now released by the judge, and they're allowed to talk. So everyone in TV is fighting for the exclusive. Colbert's laughter is a tool to deflate the pretensions of the Trump family. And I am walking here. How about those Mets? Not good at baseball, yes? You, you actually sound a lot like Melania Trump. What? No. Me? What? No. No. Uh, okay, my mistake. Um, juror number 11, uh, let's talk about the trial. You found Trump guilty on all 34 counts. Hell yes, we did. <laughs> and highlight their disconnect from the average American's reality. The humor directed at the Trump family serves a dual purpose. On one hand, it provides much needed levity in a politically charged environment. On the other hand, it helps to demystify and dismantle the aura of invincibility that the Trump family has tried to cultivate by turning them into subjects of ridicule. What happened to some of the witnesses that were on our side? They were literally crucified by this man who looks like an angel, but he's really a devil. <laughs> he looks so nice and soft. Nice? <laughs> nice and soft? Is he think of the judge of the Pillsbury Doughboy? He looks like a delicious angel, but his cans are full of lies. He says, <laughs> no, folks, he says this is eight cinnamon rolls. Kimmel, Colbert, and others make it clear that the Trump family's influence and relevance are waning. Ariana Grande, while not a comedian, adds to this cultural critique through her social media presence. By sharing and amplifying humorous takes on the Trump family's follies, she engages her audience in a form of political satire that resonates deeply with young voters. 
Grande's participation in this cultural conversation underscores the broader disapproval of the Trump family and highlights the shifting dynamics of public opinion. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, do you think Ariana Grande's actions will impact Trump's 2024 election chances? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.